Okay, we should be back. So, so uh, share your screen. Can you do that? Okay. Right. So, uh, do you need to uh, search for uh, was it S K learn something like that? S K. Yeah. So. SK, um, what's it called? Um, sometimes the name are different. Try, try. Um, okay, try, try this. Go, go back to um, uh, Spider. Let's see. Close, close this window. Go back to Spider. Okay. Now you see uh, it says a red uh, module dot, dot found. Copy that whole line and paste it into Google. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, so the first one is Stack Overflow, yeah. So this um, Stack Overflow, they, they often give a, good uh, advice when you have an error message. So if you scroll down a little bit, um, okay, you see it says a PIP install. Okay. The problem is that, um, uh, yeah, you don't have to use PIP, but I think you, you want to search in Anaconda where it says scikit-learn. Yeah, it's a little bit different name. Yeah, that's what you need to search for. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Why? Okay, now uh, you should be able to go back to Spider and hit run or debug. Okay. So where were we? All right. All right, so number nine here, we're... Uh, we're um, using this uh, train test split. Okay, so this is um, this is a uh, maybe I should sh share my screen here. Share. Okay. So where are we down here? Oh, I forgot. I think I had a slide. Anyway, this uh, SK learn is a um, common. Um, okay, let's see. Spider. Okay, so we're stepped here. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> X and Y we read in. But now we're going to split, okay? We're going to save 10%. Uh, this test size is 0 0.10, okay? So, so now X remaining, the re remaining data, you see X here was uh, 768, okay? The original data, but uh, 
the X for testing. So you think of 10% of 768 is about 77 or so, right? So X test here is going to be uh, 77. You see it, uh, uh, 77 here. Can you see this? Yeah. Okay, so that's 10% of the original data. For a, we're going to hold it back for testing. Okay, so the remaining data is um, 768 minus 77 is a 691. Okay, so we have 691 remaining. Now we're going to divide that again into a, a validation. So if we step over, we're going to call test split again. So now uh, uh, validation is going to be 104. Okay, so 10% of the remaining is about, uh, is that right? Something like that. Anyway, um, so so uh, uh, just remember that uh, the test data is that you want to hold it back and not use it for uh, training at all. The validation data is be used while you're training. You'll uh, check. It's it's a way to make up uh, uh, to 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 uh, plot your um, progress. Okay, so. Let's let's just run this. We can stop it and then uh, run. Okay, so uh, now it'll go train again. One hundred eight bucks. Okay. Probably running a little bit slow because this thing is still converting. I'm wearing this, taxing my computer here. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now if we look at the plots here, you notice that now there are two lines each, each, uh, each one has uh, two lines, okay? So this is a, a training and validation, okay? So, so training is the blue line, is what we had before. But now we have this uh, new plot, it's called a validation, okay? So it's just 10%, uh, we, we took 10% uh, of the training data and we use it to uh, uh, plot use it to to check uh, the uh, network how's how is it uh, accuracy so far so for each epoch here okay so usually um, uh, um, usually they they should look be the, almost the same like this but sometimes uh, we'll see later examples uh, with, with if there's a problem during training, you can tell with the, these plots here. But this is not doesn't look too bad. You can see that um, the orange, the validation, is more unstable. Okay, that's because the validation there's only ten percent as much validation data, so there's more uh, variation or more uh, kind of random noise. Okay, but this doesn't look too bad. But but. You see at the bottom here is accuracy, uh, seventy percent. Okay, that that was made with the test data. You see down here, um, evaluate the um, model with test data. Okay, so that was the first ten percent that we set aside. So that wasn't used in uh, training at all. Okay, so so it's important to. Uh, understands three types of data. There's a training data, the validation data, and then there's test data. But sometimes uh, you see that people mix up the naming. Sometimes the test, the uh, uh, validation 
and test data, they use a name, but it's important to uh, uh, understand the difference. Okay, so you can see it. Um, test data here was not used during the training at all until the very last step when we uh, computed the accuracy. But uh, the validation, validation data is used here uh, during the fit. Fit is where we do um, the uh, training. Okay. Okay, do you have a question? You don't see what? It's just it's just a, uh, a it's like a helper function. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Inside of SK Learn it is a big um, library, so you can uh, just uh, plug this into Google and go to the um, SK Learn uh, documentation, and uh, it will explain. Yeah. You know, so S, this SK Learn, all these libraries are many, many uh, libraries, and they're all huge. Right? It's, at first, it's too much information to uh, process, but um, if, I think if you just um, take a one step at a time. Okay. So this is just kind of helper. Um, I think maybe uh, uh, there, there's more than one way to do this. Okay, but uh, late, later I think I have an example, a different way to do this. But this this uses uh, this um, SK Learn library. Use the function called train test split. So just uh, split up your data, and you know this shuffle is true. Okay, so that means that. Um, before before it splits the data, it uh, shuffles. Yeah. So every time you run, if if you train it again, you should have a, a, a different um, different data. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's go on. Number ten. You'll need to. Okay. So now the problem is that, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll put a breakpoint here. So the problem is, is that uh, you see these uh, values, input values here. They're all different. Um, Types of uh, numbers, body weight, and uh, you know, but um, it's possible. It's possible to to feed this directly into the network, but it's generally uh, not advised. It's better to uh, uh, scale everything so that y usually they they say the the mean is zero, and the uh, the standard deviation is one. Normal, normally, if possible. So I, I think the reason they do that, it, it makes it faster to train, okay? So normally, if you see uh, um, uh, data like this, uh, normally you do not want to uh, input this directly into the network. You want to do some pre-processing. Okay, so this, uh, this is uses standard scalar Okay, this is another 
uh, function inside of SK Learner. I think, uh, by the way, uh, if you want help, another way to get help is uh, use Control I. Control I. Yeah. So if if you uh, hit Control I when it's uh, in front of the standard scaler, then uh, it'll print out the uh, help. Or you can just copy paste in the Google, which is what I usually do. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I'll set a breakpoint here. Make sure I've stopped. Go. Okay. The first, uh, this first line just just defines this uh, function here. It doesn't actually do anything. The scalar. Okay. So first thing we want to we have to call fit on x our input. So if you recall, x is just uh, our data used for training. So first you have to call fit. Okay, and then you have to transform. You have to do it in two steps like that. Okay, so now X scale, if you look at it, you have all these uh, numbers like this. Okay, so if, if you make a plot of all this data, you'll see that the, um, the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Okay, so this is uh, normally what you would you, you want to input into your um, into your network. Okay, then the rest. This is the same as the previous step. We um, so I'll I'll stop this and go. I'll just run it. Okay, everything else should be the same. I think. But the problem with doing this is that um, when you want not now now uh, when you want to use the network, okay, you have to remember that you input you didn't input values directly, you input so you have to uh, now when you before you use the network you have to scale your data before you input it and you have to scale it the same way, okay, so it makes it kind of uh, confusing. Okay, so you have to be careful when you use a scaling like this. I think, uh, so maybe, I don't know that, uh, I'm not really sure this improved. I think this improved from 70, it was 70, now improved 75 j just by adding this uh, scaling. Okay, so in general, uh, uh, you want to use uh, scaling for the best possible result. Okay. You have a question? We're going kind of fast. I know covering a lot of topics. But okay, so I'll, I'll go to the next one. Well, we'll go back and uh, review. I think I'll just uh, run through all these example and then I will go through the uh, PowerPoint and review. So save best. Okay, so before, if you remember, uh, we um, back we had save. Which which one, which one was it? What well, predictions? Yeah, number five. Remember, we have save model. Okay, we had a, a fit. First, we do a fit, which does the training. And then when it's finished, you save model. But if you look at the plots, okay, maybe this one. Okay, sometimes you, you can see the, um, uh, the values go up and down. There's like noise. Okay, so the last, the last, uh, um, the last epoch is not necessarily the best. Okay, we want to come back and uh, save. You can see here at number eighty, 
Actually, the best one was at 80, not at 100. Okay, so there's a way to, to only save the best uh, model values, not the last. So, so on um, number 11 here, if uh, you look down here, okay, it makes this, this is called a, a callback. Is my video finished? Okay. So now in inside of um, right. So inside of fit, now we we've, we've added this callback. Okay. So this callback consists of this is a list. Okay, it's in brackets here. It means that this is going to be a list. Okay. Now we only have one. Okay, but we can't have multiple. Okay, but the one callback that we have is called checkpoint. Okay, model checkpoint is defined, should be up here, I think. Yeah, from TensorFlow Keras callbacks is a, a model callback. By the way, that reminds me, um, so, sometimes you'll see a code uh, from, you'll see it from uh, Keras. Uh, models, for example, uh, import something. Okay, so so uh, uh, traditionally, this is the way you use a Keras. But um, uh, recently, a Keras has become part of TensorFlow. Okay, so you so it's better uh, not to use this old style. Okay. To use a always do from tensorflow.keras something something something, okay, but but sometimes you you'll see a code that says a, a from keras import something, okay. So you have to uh, uh, you 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 may have to um, add uh, tensorflow.keras in front of it, or it it, it won't. Uh, it'll give an error message. So you have to be careful a little bit. So anyway, um, right, so we so we import we imported model checkpoints. So this is inside of a TensorFlow. Okay. So this this will uh, um, this tells it what the name of the file to save and we're getting the validation accuracy. Okay, which is what we're plotting here. You see this orange. <clears throat> orange is the validation accuracy. Okay, so whenever uh, uh, every time that this orange value hits a peak, it'll it'll save the model. Okay, so if we run this, you can see it prints a message. I'll let this run, but um, if if the result is a is a valley, if it goes down, then it won't save the model. Pretty fast, yes. So if you go back, um, you can see here, it says uh, did not improve. Okay, so that means that it's less than the maximum. So you have to go back somewhere around 80, I think it was. Somewhere, did not improve. Something did not improve, did not improve. Did not improve. Take the smile for the camera. If you take a picture. <laughs> so um somewhere, let's go back to the top here. Mm -hmm. 
it is. All right, so it's here at, at the beginning, the first time it always says it improved from something. So it's saved to the model.5. So um, so this is a, uh, a way to only save your best uh, result. Okay. So actually this example it's not uh it's not good because uh uh it, it sh we should uh, reload the model before we evaluate but you see here we're using the the final model which was not the best so so this uh result may not be quite as good this is a 66 percent here okay. maybe uh, if we reload the model, we should have a little bit better results. Okay. Okay, we'll go on 11, 12. Okay. Okay, so here uh, we saw before um, uh, adding, uh, yeah. So this example, um, uh, we had usually when you're developing these um, AI programs, uh, you'll have try out, you want to try out different models. So for example, um, this this was the baseline. It was um the baseline was, was two hidden two hidden layers. Okay, with twelve and eight. Okay, so uh, so we start off uh, training with uh, one hidden one hidden. Oh, here it is. One hidden is the baseline. Okay, it just has a, a one hidden layer. And uh, you can uh, uh, train it and then uh, you'll get the accuracy at the bottom, okay? But I'm not, I'm not going to run it every time, but you can try different uh, uh, structures. So it's more, more, more hidden layers or uh, wider or more more neurons you can try out try out different um different um possibilities okay but you have to remember that it depends uh how much uh, training data you have so making a, a bigger model may actually uh, make the result uh, degrade if you don't have enough data okay so i'll just go on to the next one Deep wider drop out. Okay. So this is um. So for example, uh, in this graph, you see you see where the uh, training and validation is. You see the gap here. Okay. This is loss. You can also see with um with accuracy is gap here. Okay. So this means that um that the training when it it computes the accuracy on the training data. It's a little bit higher than the validation data. Okay, so this is what the, this is what they call overfitting. You hear this word a lot. Uh, overfitting it means that the 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 model thinks that it's training very well. It might go to one hundred percent. It it thinks that it's it's training perfectly. The uh, training data. Okay, but when you come back and check with the validation data, it's actually not so good. Okay, so that means overfitting. It's 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 fitting to the training data, but it's not general not generalizing. It cannot um, uh, handle new data. It's never it's never seen before. Okay, so that that's what uh, this uh, orange curve here is telling you. Okay, so there's usually uh, uh, two two methods to uh, solve this problem of overfitting. The first one is called a dropout. Okay, 
So what is drop out? So you can see, where is it? I defined this model um, with drop out here. Okay, so you see this uh, layer here. So in between, in between the uh, two hidden layers, uh, I added this uh, dropout. So so fifty percent. So just dropout just means that it'll uh, set fifty at random. Set fifty percent of the values to zero. It's kind of a. You think it's a kind of a crazy. <laughs> why would you want to do this? It seems like a very bad idea. It's like a, you know shooting with a machine gun. There's a random, uh, random, uh, your network has many uh, values and you're just 50%, you're just gonna put to zero, right? But it, it helps, it helps to, uh, you, you want these two um, graphs to be almost the same. That means that uh, um, the training data and the validation data, uh, there shouldn't be a gap here. Okay, so, so dropout is a very, um, easy way to uh, to help uh, solve this problem, okay? And it's very easy to add, okay? The, the other method is called uh, augmentation, okay? The other is, is uh, if this, this uh, uh, overtraining is often caused, you don't have enough uh, training data, okay? Especially if you, if you work like in medical, uh, uh, you don't have so many, uh, patient uh, data, okay? And it's not easy to just collect more patient data. So they use an augmentation. So, so you try to uh, add little uh, random numbers and uh, I'll, I'll show you examples later, but just remember um, uh, 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 overfitting. Overfitting means a gap, a gap here, okay? And the, uh, the two most common methods is a dropout and augmentation. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll go back to later with more examples. So the next code, yeah, yeah. The next code is what? Same final. Okay, so now uh, this train final um, is a, uh, so we, we, we have these two lines here, this um, training data and validation data, right? So, so the validation is useful when you're not sure about your hyperparameters, okay? You're not sure how many layers are best or you know, how many neurons are best. Okay, so you use a graph like this, or how much dropout do you need? Okay, but eventually you'll get to the point, okay, this is the best model I can possibly think of. Okay, then you want a, a final model. So a final model uh, does not use any uh, validation. You uh, go back to the original that we, we had before, which was, um, the data is not is not you still you still need to keep your uh, test data okay to remember test data is separate at, for the very final step so you can keep your test data but um, you want to uh, combine the the uh, training and validation data okay so that make the final model so so but uh, you cannot, um, um, when you make the final model, you, you can't uh, uh, track the progress, okay? You just hope that it's the best possible, okay? So, um, so that's all the, uh, I thought I'd, um, let's see, go through some of these slides here. So this will just kind of review some of these concepts. So we talked about Raylu, save your model. We talked about um, 
keep the best model, right? We talked about that. Probably about, I forgot what this is. Okay. So this was just a validation data. We make a plot. So this is make a plot of the, it makes something like this. We have about 45 more minutes. Right, so this is a plot of the, uh, so here, this is one, one uh, example is that uh, he, he labels his test here, okay. It really should be a validation, okay. So, so sometimes it's confusing. I wish he would uh, label this a validation rather than test. Okay, so matplotlib, uh, this is the library we use to, to make these kind of plots. And there's many um, big, big, it's another big library. If you want to uh, do more uh, fancy kind of plots, you can, many options. Right, so uh, stochastic gradient descent. So uh, stochastic means a, a random, like a random numbers. And uh, gradient descent. So um, when, when you start off training, uh, the, the network doesn't know anything. It's kind of stupid, right? So, um, so at the beginning, uh, uh, you want to uh, change, make big changes, okay? But then in the last few epochs, you want to make very small uh, changes. So, so they often uh, show it a graph like this. At first, you make big changes, and then gradually uh, make small changes. So that um, the gradient, a gradient means if you're far, you, you know what the correct answer is because you have a label. Okay, so if you're far. If you're way off, then uh, you want to make a big, that means the gradient is big, okay? So you want to make a big change. But if you're very near, you only have a very small error, okay? Then you want to make a small change to your network, okay? So that's what they call a, a stochastic gradient descent. Okay, let me... um. I think if the problem, if I share, yeah, this is not gonna work. I need to, uh, I need to stop sharing. Let me, um, let me, all right, I can just go share again. Recording, good, I'm recording. Share thing two. Okay. Okay. I think this. Okay. So this cost function. Yeah. So uh, later we'll see uh, different examples, cost function. Until now, we've been using this uh, binary classification. Okay, so we have a yes, no. Later we'll see uh, other uh, kind of examples. Okay. Okay, so we did a uh, splitting. So this, um, data splitting. Right. Oh, yeah. So this is another way to to uh, to split your uh, validation data. Another way is inside of the fit function. You can just uh, tell it, uh, I want thirty percent for uh, to hold back for a validation. Okay. So this is actually a maybe easier way that we we use this uh, SK Learn library. Okay. So this is another method you can use. Okay, so if we if if, if we use a thirty percent for validation, then we'll be left with five 
100 for training and a 254 for validation. Okay, so we get the, uh, yeah. So you can see on, on this uh, output, it has both, it has a loss and accuracy and then a validation loss and a validation accuracy. There's two, two values. So you can think of for accuracy, it, it, this is computed on the uh, training data and validation is from the data that we held back. And this is the, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to, um, this 514 here, the epoch is easy to understand, but this is, I forgot what to call this, a step or something? 514, it's 514 because um, this number, we have 514 uh, data and uh, that size. Uh, so that's what this number means. It's a number of data. Yeah. Okay. And this is the manual method for data splitting. Here. Yeah. Right. So this is what we saw before. This SK learn. Train test split. So this is how we did it in the first example. But, there, but remember, there's, there's at least two ways, whichever you prefer. Okay. And this is SK Learn Library. Okay, so um, this is a uh, um, it's called K fold cross validation. So uh, if especially if if you're going to submit uh, a paper. Like you write a paper, you have to be uh, uh, very careful that your statistics are uh, uh, good, or the uh, reviewer will. Uh, he, if it's a good reviewer, he should say, "Oh, uh, you do not use proper statistics." So, so one thing about um, uh, reporting, but, but until now, we 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 just uh, uh, reported one value, the accuracy. Okay, but uh, sometimes you you have good luck. Sometimes you are lucky and you have a good result and sometimes they're not so good, okay? So uh, you should really, uh, you should repeat uh, the training process five, at least five times, sometimes 10, okay? Usually between five and 10. So uh, so say uh, five times and then that can, you can compute the mean and the standard the standard deviation, okay? So that's what, that's what this does. It's, um, this uses another another function, so SK learn stratified K fold. Okay, it's kind of a scary sounding name, but just uh, here he, he, he's doing it ten times. He's taking his data, and uh, at, so you, you take all your data, and uh, he, and you split it up into ten groups. And each time you repeat the experiment, you you hold back uh, uh, one group for validation. Okay, and you do that uh, ten times, and then uh, you should get something like this. Okay, so every time it it uh, runs, it it outputs a value. So here we had a good result, but here is not so good result. Okay, so the uh, the key is is to always, uh, if you're going to report a uh, an accuracy in a paper, you should always give the uh, mean plus or minus the standard deviation, okay. and the number. This the n is a ten here. We ran it ten times. Okay, so this is more cross validation. This is um. I forgot what this is. This is cross validation score. I forgot what this does. I think it's another way. There's several ways to compute this cross validation here. So this cross validation score. Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot what this is. <laughs> this is. Okay, grid search. Um, 
So you have, you might have a many, a, 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 uh, I was saying that there's too many hyper parameters. Okay, what, what is the best, for example, the, there's many different options for uh, optimizers and initializers and number of apux and, and uh, batches, okay? But uh, a grid search means that you're going to uh, set up and run every possible um, combination of, of uh, these values. So, so for example, um, here, he, uh, here's two, two different uh, uh, optimizers, the Adam and RMS prop and initializers. Okay, so uh, norm normally you think, well, maybe it's best just to uh, start off with all zeros or maybe it should be uh, random numbers. Is, um, the initializers can affect uh, the training speed, how, how long it takes to, to start getting a good uh, result. Okay. How are we doing on time here? We've got plenty of time. More than 30 minutes. Okay, so here he's got one, two, three, the epochs. What, what's the best number of epochs and the best possible uh, batch? Size? So he has three, three uh, epochs and batches. So um, this uh, grid search, uh, grid result, he, he's using, um, we'll just uh, do every possible combination. And uh, result will look something... The best, the best result was a uh, turned out to be this by batch size. Yeah, you can see um, some things should be kind of obvious. For example, uh, the best number of epochs was one hundred and fifty, which was actually the max, the maximum that he tested. If you go back, you see he, he tested fifty, one hundred, one fifty. Okay, you would think that more uh, epochs would be better because it gives it longer to uh, find. So that's not really surprising. Also, the number of, of batch size, usually a smaller batch size is better. Not always, but usually. Here he tested five, 10, and 20 for batch size, okay? But you can think, in general, a smaller batch size will give a better result, but it'll take it longer takes longer to train, okay? Then the, op the optimizer and the initializer, okay? It just turned out that, and, and it um, doesn't mean that, that these um, uh, results are the, are the best all the time. And just on the data that you are training with this. So if you have different data, you might have a different result. Okay, but it's interesting to look at the worst case. Oh yeah, the worst case was um fifty. Was a uh, fifty uh, epochs. Okay, which is the minute the smallest number. He went fifty, one hundred, one fifty. So you could guess the worst case was fifty. And uh, yeah, ten. The batch size was ten. Yeah. Anyway, um, okay. So let's let's go on to um, another example. So this is a different uh, uh, data set. Okay. So if if you look, uh, if, let me stop sharing here. If you go back to a spider, um, where is spider? It is. Okay, I'm gonna close all this. This is all diabetes examples. Close all of these. And then uh, if you see uh, these folders, this iris folder, inside of the iris folder, if you can open that,
Okay, so what what this is is a um, flower flowers. Let me um. Where are we? Oops. Right. So um. Okay, so um, if you open the uh, this .csv file, uh, it should look like this. Okay, so what this is is um, um there are. Where are we here? I forgot, where am I? I should be. Sorry. Right. Okay, so, so what these numbers are, are uh, they measured the width of these uh, leaves over here. Okay, so they measure the width of a leaf here. So uh, the first, uh, so the uh, the flowers have a, um, a sepal and a petal. So I, I'm not sure, one, one of these is a sepal and one is a petal. And you have a length and a width, so that's what uh, these numbers are. That there are three kinds of of, uh, of uh, irises. There's a setosa, versicola, versicolor, and a um, virginica. Okay, three classes of uh, flowers here. Okay, so this somebody, some poor uh, graduate student, had to <laughs> measure these leaves like this. Okay. And uh, when, um, okay, so these are the three different types. Uh, okay, so maybe it's, it's difficult just from looking at the flower to, to know what, what um, which class, okay. But if you uh, measure the, um, the width and the, and the length of the, of the petal, then you can input that into your AI and uh, have hopefully a good result, okay. So, uh, okay, so this is import. This is mostly the same, okay. We saw before is that uh, <clears throat> X is your uh, training data and uh, Y is your label. Okay, this time uh, we're going to use it uh, to, to read the to read the data. We used um, this uh, this read SCD, which is part of the uh, pandas. Okay. So if if you run your uh, code, you'll probably get an error. Yeah, so you have to go back into uh, into Anaconda and install pandas. Okay, but the problem with this data is that um, um, you can see the uh, the class before we had zero and one for the class was a you know positive for diabetes or negative for diabetes, but now we have uh, three classes. Okay, so now it's not it's not a yes no question. It's a, a it's what they call a multi-class, they call a multi-class classification problem. But there's another problem is that uh, this is, a uh, um, if you look at the, uh, um, CSV, the, the uh, this is, it's entered as uh, these three names here, okay? So we have to convert these to numbers. We have to give, call it zero, one, two. 
okay, before we input to the, uh, before we can train, we have to uh, convert these um, names into numbers. Okay, so like this. Okay, and then um, <clears throat> there's one hot encoding. This is a word that uh, you see a lot. Um, it means that, uh, um, so for example, this first one is Satosa, Iris Satosa. It, it has a, a class value of zero. Okay, but we're going to make a, uh, it's, it's called a, uh, a, a vector a, called a one hot encoding. It means it put a one in the zero position here. Okay, and uh, the second one has a one in the second position and the third has a one in the third position. Okay, you see, it seems like a very uh, a dumb way to do it. Why don't you just give it zero, one, two? It would make more sense. But uh, it turns out that uh, <clears throat> the AI and uh, with GPUs, they, they like to use vectors. Okay, so it's more efficient because you can uh, you can uh, process a, a vector in parallel. Okay, so so normally so so this is uh, this is one hot encoding is uh, it's used a lot. Okay, so so here we use this enco encoder transform. So um, let's go into um, let's see here. Where am I? Okay, stop sharing. Let's um, I'll share screen and then spider. Okay, so I'll put a breakpoint here at the beginning here, and then a debug. Okay, so first it read it calls it data frame. So if you use this um. Pandas library, you have to go two steps. First, it reads this data frame, and then you get the data set. So if you look, I'm not sure what data frame and data set. Yeah. You can see that they're the same thing, basically. But uh, data frame is a, is a type that's used inside of uh, um, Pandas. But to get the data set is an array of uh, objects. Okay. This is what we want. Okay, so then we're gonna do the same things. Uh, get the training data and the label. Okay, so now X is two-dimensional array of floating point numbers, which is good, okay. And Y is a label data. Okay, so now we see this Y is these text values and the names here. They go down, there's three different types. Okay, so we need to uh, convert uh, the Y into an encoded. So to do that, we're gonna use this um, label encoder, which is imported from SK Learn again. Okay, so this uh, define it, and then we're gonna fit. We're gonna send the label data. We're gonna send that to the um, encoder. So it, it'll go through and automatically find how many uh, different um, different classes. Okay, so we fit it, and then uh, I'm gonna transform transform y. So now uh, encoded y is a Start off zero, they're all zero, then one, and then two, which is what we want. Okay, and then um, we're going to do this uh, one hot encoding, which is dummy Y. So, dummy Y. So now you, you can see. Um, uh, the first, the first, the first, 
at the top that are all zeros, right? But now we're getting one hot encoding needs a one in the zero position. And then there's a one in the one position. And then there's a one in the two position. Okay, so this is what they call one hot encoding. So then we define our model classifier. Okay, this classifier. Okay, and we're going to do a tenfold again encoding. Result. Yeah. So um, this will run a ten times. So it'll take a uh, too much time. So I'm going to stop this. Okay, and then come back. Hopefully. Hopefully, I have a slide here. Okay, so here's our one hot encoding. The network. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now um, th this uh, model here, you can see, uh, it looks almost the same as we had before, but, uh, but, um, you can see the the final layer has a three. There's three possible uh, categories. Okay, so now instead of a um, what was it? Um, not um, sigmoid. Before we had sigmoid here. Now we're going to use softmax. So softmax, think of it like um, um, um. Think about like the probability. It's it's not always a one hundred percent confident. Okay, if it's a hundred percent confident that its uh, type is zero, then uh, it will return a one at zero at the zero position, and then zero zero. The sum is always always adds up to one. Okay, so if it's it's if it's uh has no idea, it'll be point three, point three, and point three. Okay. That's called a softmax. So softmax is used when you have a, a multi-class classification. Okay, and also the difference is here the uh, loss function. Instead of before we had binary cross entropy, now we're going to use a categorical categorical because we have more than uh, two uh, possibilities. Okay, so that's the only difference. Otherwise, it's it's almost the same. Okay. So then uh if we run that it takes it has to run ten times, okay, but uh we'll get uh accuracy and a uh, standard dv this is an average accuracy and the standard deviation. Okay. So here's the full list. Okay, so the important thing, the important thing to remember here is that you have you have to think about uh, what kind of question do you want to answer. If if it's a, a yes no question, then uh, your final layer should be a, a one with a uh, um, sigmoid. But if you have multi uh, multi class classification, then uh, it should use a softmax and categorical cross entropy. Thanks. Okay, so that's irises. Let's go to um, sonar. Okay, so this is, um, you can imagine uh, if you're at war in uh, Ukraine and uh, the Russians have mined the harbor then uh, you have this uh, boat equipped with a sonar reflector. Okay, so this is sonar data. And uh, the very uh, rightmost, all, all this on the left is all the sonar data. And the very uh, rightmost column, is it R or M? So R means that it's a rock, it's just a rock. The N means that it's a mine, it's a bomb. Okay, so we have this 
This is our um, training data. Okay. So in this example, everything looks the same. Now here we have 60 column. We have uh, 60. Uh, uh, I think it's they do from each direction, like 60 degrees, 60 degrees, something. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but um, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's go to spider, go into, where are we? Why am I here? Where am I? Here, I want to, um, oh, let's see, I want to stop and open. Okay, iris. The next one is sonar. Okay. Okay, so, um, we put a breakpoint here and we debug. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not really sure why. Yeah, I think, um, you see this as type float here. Before we, we we didn't have this, but I think I think the reason is because uh, if we look at data set, it's all numbers except for the very uh, right side. On the very the very last column, column sixty, is have an R and M. Okay, R and an M. Okay, so this is um, a text. So we have a problem again, we're gonna to have to convert this to numbers, okay? So I think this is why uh, you have to use it. make sure that X is going to be a floating point, okay? So uh, then Y get the labels, but now you can see Y has the uh, characters. Okay, we, we, we don't, we can't input this directly into the network, we have to uh, encode it. So this is the same uh, label encoder that encoded Y. This is starts off one and zero. Okay. So rocks are one. You have to remember rocks are one and mines are zero. Okay. So then we can um, do the same thing. It, it, it does it, it has to train it 10 times, so it's too slow. So um, I'll go back here. Sonar. So this is, uh, yeah. Okay, so, so the model, you can see we have, we know we need a, the input dimensions is 60. Okay, because we have 60 columns of data. Okay, so this this number uh, we know, but the this is uh, this 60 here is what I was saying is a hyperparameter. So so a good way to start if you're just starting completely from scratch is to set uh, this number here. Number of neurons is the same as the input. Okay, and then uh, then you can try. Usually, you uh, double try try. You can try twice as many, or you can try half as many, and then look look at the result. Okay, that way uh, you don't have too many um, too many options. Okay, and here uh, the this is a binary problem. It's either a it's either a mine or it's not. Okay, so we go back uh, dense one and sigmoid and the loss is binary cross entropy instead of categorical cross entropy, okay? 
So this, the rest is the same. And uh, so you can get 80% plus or minus 7%. Not too bad. So yeah, so, uh, so this is, um, how can you improve? So we had a baseline here, a baseline result. Okay, 81%. So keep this in mind, it's 81%. Okay, we can try uh, different things um, to improve. So one way, uh, uh, it's a standardization. So the so you can rescale your uh, data so that the uh, mean the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So we've seen. So sometimes if you do that, uh, you can get a little better result. So let's see. And yeah, we talked about this one hot encoding. Normalization, yeah, we talked about this. Okay, so if uh, if you rescale the data, okay, we 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 used this before from a SK learn, we use a standard scalar, then uh, we can improve. Uh, for, it was eighty one percent. We we went up to eighty four percent. Just just by uh, pre-processing the input the data. Okay. So you might try um, a smaller network. Okay. So this is why I say uh, uh, the input input dimension is, is decided. We know we have a six sixty for the input. Okay. The question is uh, the number of neurons. So try uh, thirty here. So you see in this case. It actually uh, improved. We went from eighty-four to eighty-six. Okay, so maybe sometimes, especially if you have a limited amount of data to train with, a smaller a smaller network is uh, better. Okay, so this is a larger network. So this uh, this one has a two um two layers okay so the first layer has 60 neurons the second layer has a 30 okay but actually it turned out the result went down yeah so it's uh maybe if you had more data to train with you could the larger uh, network would be better but you have a limited amount of uh, training data so your the size of your network that you can train is limited. Okay, okay then the that the last example is called um, is Boston housing. Okay, so <clears throat> this time it's 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 not uh, it's not a classification problem. It's what they call a regression. Okay, so we want this is database is. We want to uh, train a network to predict uh, how much the value of a house that we can sell for. So we have all these um, these this data on the left here. Um, for example, cr crime rate, the crime rate, if it's in a heavy, dangerous neighborhood, you would expect the uh, the price would be lower. Okay. And then... Um, at the right, on the right side here, the uh, N is the medium value owner occupied home. So, so this um, this is the this is the true value that they actually measured. Okay. So, that, so we want to uh, the we want to uh, design a, a network that it will input all this uh, data points, all this, all this data, and it will output a number like 24, this is $24,000 or $15,000. Okay. Right, so this is uh, collected in Boston. So this is called a regression. 
So until, until now, we've been doing classification. Okay, but now we're going to do regression. Okay, so basically the same. We have the same uh, problem. Um, here, uh, the CSV file is, uses spaces instead of commas. Okay, well, that's, this library can handle that for us. Okay, the, on the left, 13 columns is our data, and the right one column is the price. Okay. So our model, so here again, we know the input dimensions is 13. So we can start off a uh, number of neurons, make it the same. Okay, we'll start off with 13. And and this is kind of, um, so the last the last layer is a, is, is a dense one. But notice there's no, uh, there's no other parameter. You, uh, before we had a, um, before a network had a, um, what do we call it? Um, sigmoid. There's no active activation value. So this is a um, regression. So we went to out. We went to just output a value, not a um, probability. Okay. So that is why um, you see the, the final layer here <clears throat> is just dense one without any activation. Okay, and the uh, the loss function now is a, a mean square error. Okay, so now we're, we're not we're not categorizing anything, but we want the the distance from the actual value in the compute and the and um, we don't care about the sign plus or minus, so that's why they use a square. They square it, the mean square error. Okay, so it's for regression, you, you want to, um, it, important, the important is the, the final layer and the loss function. Those two, you have to get those correct. Okay, so everything else is the same. The re Estimator, this is all the same. And this, so the baseline here, um, the result, uh, I think, yeah, I think, um, I think a zero, I think a zero is the best possible result. It means that it, it, it uh, computed exactly correct. Okay, but for the best baseline, it was off by thirty-two dollars or something. I'm not sure. Okay, but <clears throat> we can make some improvements. So one thing, uh, which, um, one thing, like I said before, um, all these values have different uh, scales. They're all different um, types of data. So you should. Uh, try to rescale your data before you start training. Okay, so prepare your data before modeling. Okay, so we've seen this before, this sklearn uh, standardization. So standardize, All right? So this, uh, here they use a, a pipeline. So this is kind of before we had a callback similar, uh, make a pipeline to uh, rescale the data. Okay, so by doing this uh, rescale, we improved. Remember, we want to, this uh, value to be a smaller, an absolute value. So we went from 32 to 29. Not too bad. Okay, so we can try a, again a deeper a deeper network. So by the way, when when they talk talk about deep learning, this is what they're this is what deep means. It has a how many of these uh, layers here? Okay, so later we'll we'll see. This is only only has two 
and then later today, we'll we'll see networks that are really really deep. They have um, dozens of layers. Okay. So anyway, um, so try it like this, and then uh, we see a, another improvement. We went down to twenty two from twenty nine. Okay, so we can try uh, a wider, okay, so more uh, neurons. This is how many neurons are 20. So we went from a increase from 13 to 20. And uh, we saw another small improvement, okay. We went from 22 to 21 by adding uh, more neurons. So, um, so you can uh, see uh, how to uh, uh, modify your uh, hyperparameters to try to get the best result. Okay. Do you have a question? We covered a lot, I know, but but um, I think. Um, very simple. I, I think I start off very uh, simple data, like uh, um, diabetes. It's very simple, and uh, you can see uh, how you can train a simple, very simple uh, network. I think uh, when I, when I started learning, I I, I tried to learn a very uh, advanced, um, you know, cutting cutting edge, <laughs> and I got so uh, frustrated. Okay, it's easy to get a, uh, how do you say, a, hit a roadblock and then you, you don't know how to improve. But um, I think it's good to start with these very uh, simple um, examples. Okay, so it's almost 12, so we'll stop here. And uh, tomorrow there's no class. Okay, tomorrow no class, I think. But, um, Wednesday, Wednesday, I think, uh, same time in the morning. Okay, so I'll see you back here on uh, Wednesday. Okay, so I'll stop. And, uh,